Hi everybody. Um, so ha has anyone already heard of video so far? Because it's been out since I think RHEL 7.5 was out. No one's heard of it? Nope. Tried it? Touched it? Heard of it? Wow, nothing at all. Okay, doing a bad job. that's doing great. Anything? That's okay, that's good. Um, so you can tell us anything. We'll I can tell you anything. I could, I could tell you it makes waffles and you'll believe me. Yeah, does it do blockchain? Uh, <laughs> you know what, just to satisfy the buzzword, I'll say yes, and then rescind it at the end of the presentation. Um, okay, so if this works well. Don't we have no Yeah. So this is me, um, a quick uh, overview. Um, I'm not the most uh, experienced in the field, but I've had enough time to know when there's some good things and some bad things, and um, I think my favorite part is that I grew up with Windows my first actual um, PC was uh, one of those little, I don't even know what you call it anymore, the little cubular Mac, just all self-contained. Um, and that when I had that crash too many times, I moved on to a PC which had Windows, um, which cost something like $4,000 back then. And, and now you get the same thing for 80 bucks. Um, so um, I like the fact that everything brought me up to now where I am with open source and it's done really good for me and career-wise good, very very good too. So um, what else here? So video, we're going to cut right into it. Uh, that's too far. Is it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so um, officially as of RHEL 7.5, you can make this run on earlier, but you're going to end up building from source. And I'll go into further details of what it is as we go on. But um, there's two components. There's the management piece and the kernel module. Um, and if you're familiar, who's familiar with Ansible, raise a hand if you are. All right, so as of 2.5, there's a video module, so you can manage video. And um, is anyone aware of the company called Permabit? All right, so that's the acquisition that gave VDO to Red Hat. Um, I don't know the exact date, but if you look it up, I'm sure it's somewhere online. Um, this company, um, I don't have exact quotes, but they've been writing the code that does deduplication and compression for many of the storage appliances people are familiar with today. And those are along the lines of like the NetApps and like various other appliances of storage where you throw drives in it or it comes with drives and it's just a interface giving you iSCSI and such and so forth. Um, so they decided at some point that the software should be, you know, open sourced. Clearly they agreed to that when Red Hat bought them. Um, and that's the nice part is that now it's open source. So um, what it gives you is a lot like we're showing here, you get, there's many ways you can deploy it. But it's a lot like, think you can, if you want to think about where it lives, think about LVM. And it's either a block that can live right above disk or somewhere um, above LVM as, as like another layer. And then you introduce the file system or LVM on top of it. And as long as that's happening, it does block level dedupe or compression and zero block omission. Follow so far? Okay. So if there's a block of data that has virtually nothing in it, it's like some file systems will still write that. This will look at it and be like, that's nothing, I'll just reference it. So it has a metadata layer and has some deduplication tables, but that's built into what it does when it meets um, a device that you give it. So um, this is a pretty good layout of what the structure looks like. You can put it nearly anywhere, but there's some, you know, I won't say best practices, but there's some good places to put it and some bad places to put it. Um, what else? Uh, it prefers uh, small I.O. and SSDs. So the timing in terms of the, the economy of SSDs is pretty good because NVMEs are pretty popular um, and the 2.5 inch um, SSDs are pretty popular. Um, getting those into storage arrays has just become you know, close to economical. So, um, if it benefits SSDs, I think it's good timing. Um, so what they claim is that it has predictable over-provisioning, which if you look at what that says, it says 
you can have a disk that's, for example, 10 gigs, and then map it out with VDO as a layer saying that it's 15 gigs and report that to the file system on top of it. So you're faking out having more storage than you actually do. Now, I'm going to argue sort of against this, and you'll see why by the time we hit the end of this. Um, but it is a nice way to sort of sell it if you're Red Hat. But I'm also going to show you how to like you, you can use this on CentOS um, just the same. Um, so, so what are you going to argue against? I'm going to argue against how predictable the over-provisioning is. Because you could do a ton of math, or you could just not over-provision too far. You know what I mean? So um, there's a few numbers here. Feel free to go over them. I'm just going to kind of graze over a few of them. When you see MSDDUP, um, referencing some uh, data I found related to Microsoft's um, similar offering in this area, um, offering DDUP. Now, the numbers are pretty good compare, when you compare it to MS DDUP. And I'm going to do some comparisons to things like OpenZFS that you might already be familiar with. Um, but um, they're, they're pretty good numbers. Um, the, the point here where it says it needs half a gigagram is base. And then for every one terabyte of physical, and the key is physical, not logical, storage thereafter, my screensaver's not off, um, needs uh, roughly a quarter gigagram after that. All right. Um, and I'll compare to some ZFS later. Um, this is another key point that they like to harp on, and that the operations are all in line and not happening afterwards. So as things are happening, it's doing things on the fly. So it's a little more uh, CPU, oper CPU intensive, um, probably not more than what we see from things like ZFS. Uh, and then, yeah, so it won't live on disks that are very, very small. You can't demo this on less than roughly five gig disk because it needs a certain amount of space for its metadata and dedupe tables, regardless of how much data you actually have in the volume. Um, and everything works at a 4K chunk size. Now, based on all of this stuff, there are lots of tunables, and there's a, there's a long list of them, but they're in the man pages. I'm not going to bother going over. Um, let's see here. So versus OpenZFS. Now I'm going to jump ahead before we, you can go through this if you like, but um, I'm a huge proponent for OpenZFS. When I found out I can do that on Linux, using ZFS on Linux, I built a NAS the next day, and now it has like nine terabytes holding my family's, you know, photos from, you know, generations so that if that box dies, I'm in humongous trouble. But I trust it because it works so well with what it does, and it's compressed and deduped and all that stuff. Now, um, the only thing I didn't like about ZFS is that this whole thing about GPL versus CDDL. Now, as a home user, you could say I don't care, and that's the reality. I really, you could say you just don't care. But um, I kind of like to use what I tend to use at work because it's just familiarity, and everything I use at work is tends to be Red Hat or CentOS. I don't see a lot of Debian. My NAS at home runs Debian for ZFS on Linux. I tried to run ZFS on Linux with CentOS, and I didn't have as much as good of a time as I could have. Now, some of you might argue that there's ways to have a good time doing that. I couldn't get that far. Um, so the numbers here, when I saw these, were pretty staggering, which gives me a reason to say, OK, maybe I can move my ZFS array to this once I amass enough drives to do the migration, for God's sake. Um, but it's really, really, like it's a, it's a pretty drastic difference. And everyone has been complaining that with ZFS, you need terabytes and terabytes of RAM to store you know, something as little as like 25 to 26 terabytes on ZFS. It's a lot of RAM. Home users can't amass that quantity of RAM you know, to enable dedupe. And that's why most people who run ZFS on a home lab, or even in some production environments for companies, don't even enable dedupe. They just enable compression, and you reap the benefits of that. And that's fantastic. Now, but I want dedupe, because you know what I have a lot of? In hypervisors, you have a lot of volumes containing um, ISOs of, of OSs. And what differentiates between releases that are like dot releases? Not very much. And when you have a bunch of OSs running off of um, uh, 
let's say you have a volume that contains a bunch of running OSs in a hypervisor, and they're all running the same OS, for example. And let's say they're even a couple of dot versions apart from each other, right? Um, in, that, in that scenario, you're running a lot of really common data blocks constantly. So if you have RAM dedupe, which some hypervisors give you, that's great. But your storage footprint is still humongous for pretty much what you could probably shrink a 10 to, 10 to 1 if you had something like dedupe on. And that's something you don't want to miss out on. So getting the same thing with, I don't even know what the ratio is, but it's humongous, out of only 7 gigs of RAM for the same amount of storage, that's going to turn heads a little bit. Um, the other thing that's really big in difference here is that um, everything ZFS does tends to be, um, they do the dedupe after compression. So it's not all in line, right? And VDO, again, like I said, it does it in line. So it applies dedupe before compression so that data is only compressed once in that line of putting it to the disk. So it, whenever it sees the same data again, it references it with metadata. So um, the payoff is pretty good. Um, I like, I like what, they're, what they're showing. It's, it's nice. Um, now, ButterFS. Um, it was, or probably is, soon deprecated in RHEL. Um, so Red Hat made a decision from the enterprise perspective that ButterFS isn't really prepared for production use. Um, as a home user, I have used it, but not in a critical situation. Some people have played with it, and a lot of people were hoping it would be sort of the answer for open source, really good quality storage layer, but um, it has great features, but it hasn't quite been fully fleshed out. So again, we go looking for something else. So there are some, there is some data points you can put against VDO, but not many that are really even worth mentioning. Um, they did get a few things right regarding doing things in line and uh, doing dedupe post process is okay. Um, but yeah, there isn't much else to say here um, regarding comparing the two. Um, the other part is that it's a file system while VDO is a block, block device level type of um, layer. It's difficult to describe because I've never had to describe something at the layer of LVM before. I don't know what the name is really. So now there's some things about video that are really good based on what we've seen. And there's some things that are not so good. So um, if you have a volume, and I, if, if we have time I can do a demo, but um, if you have a volume that you've set up and video says it's for example 10 gigs um, and you've used 9 according to video, right? The, the uh, new tools that give you DF and DU, like they're not going to report the exact same thing. It's the same issue you have with OpenZFS in that um, you have to use a different tool set to see what your actual storage consumption is and what's left on the drive. And then you have to do some comparisons between what the tools are reporting, which is again another headache. So this is something I kind of wish they had they're, they're going to integrate, and given the fact that it's part of an enterprise operating system, I don't think it's too far off to, to hope that it happens. Um, this is another big one, and it kind of goes to what I mentioned at the, at the beginning about um, guessing for over-provisioning, over is there's a lot of trial and error about what using test volumes before you use one in an official way uh, regarding how much you can use thin volumes in LVM on top of video and do over provisioning, which is great to use, but again, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, the complete stack. This would be something that is what, like the closest thing that we have to compare is like what ZFS gives us, which is dedupe compression, RAID encryption, checksumming on files, snapshots, and maybe a few other features that it has. Now, in order to do the same thing with the tool set that you, know, you get with CentOS or RHEL, you really only get sort of this far. Video, you could probably do RAID with MDADM and then DMcrypt for encryption. You could use Lux if you want. And then I started looking up how you could do checksums on the open source and I'm not incredibly familiar with it, but apparently you can do, use things like MD5 Deep. There's a, um, um, a D, another DM module there is out there, but I'm not too familiar. And then LVM snapshots might satisfy that. 
So while looking for this and then trying to dive into the team that did VDO, um, I found out there's a product uh, project out there which if you're on a pretty recent version of Fedora, you can look for this. It's called Stratus. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, the aim for Stratus is to kind of give you that all-encompassing complete stack that compares to things like ZFS on Linux. Um, it's ambitious because there's a lot of tools to make work together perfectly, which are already packaged in things like we know, like OpenZFS. So it's um, mature up to that point where you can do VDO and MDADM, probably a little bit DM crypt, but once you get that far, it becomes a bit of a management nightmare. Um, so you could do it. Automation out there it gives us the ability to do that without too much hassle, but again, there's so much that has to be still fleshed out to, for it to be a complete tool set. But I'm really happy from an open source point of view here that um, like I'm glad this is a community that exists now that where they're going to accept code and make this project a thing. Um, that's their address. It's currently in what they haven't described yet. It's, the, it's in a pre-production stage of alpha or beta. Um, so this other one is kind of just a nice to have but still on my wish list, the web UI for um, all the distros. Right now, if you run Cockpit inside CentOS or RHEL, uh, you'll get an integration that you can, you can see to spawning just video volumes, which is really nice for if you don't want to get to know all the command line commands. Um, but I would say the answer to that is, why are you on Linux if you're afraid of the command line? Um, but still, it's nice to have because then it helps you with some of this, the, um, the guessing and understanding the size and the consumption. So it's nice to see a graph once in a while. Um, and I'm curious if anyone else can think of something that ZFS or another file system might have that you think should be in this type of tool. And when you answer, maybe think about talking to these guys. Replication. Yeah. Replication. That's the one thing that's missing from the, that stack list is replication. Okay. So, is that are you talking? What's the equivalent of that that already exists? Well, ZFS send and receive. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in the NetApp world, it's uh, uh, snap mirrors. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's there's uh, I don't see anything in what you've talked about about yeah. replicating one set of blocks mm -hmm. to another set of storage. Yeah. Yeah, there is none. Um, and I mean, unless you do some clever work with um, LVM snapshots, I, I don't think there is a way to do it. And I'm talking about even outside of things like NetApp. But yeah, go ahead, you had one? Yeah, revision control. Revision control? Could uh, you? Snapshots. Like managing snapshots in the tool itself? Uh, I was thinking more at the file level. So every time I change something, if it's set as uh, to, uh, to have uh, revision control basically to like structures for every uh, every revision. You mean to like pull back the delta from what's changed? Yeah. So yeah, like that's a feature I'm familiar with in ZFS, and it's something I'm sure they could work into this when they figure out probably checksums, yeah. right? So they can compare. You had one? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I've been using ZFS for quite a while, and I used to use LVM, so I'm not sure if. LVM snapshots have improved, sure. but if they're like they used to be, I wouldn't. They're not really comparable right. with ZFS snapshots. That right, absolutely, yeah. Free, right. Yeah. Um, I guess the other thing I would say is just you know hierarchical storage management, right? The, the ability in ZFS to to carve up your storage into, into you know essentially directory hierarchies can become you know yeah. file systems, right? Yeah, yeah. Data um, sets and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. LVM data sets don't give you that. Yeah, yeah. That level, of, quite that level of flexibility. Yeah. Um, as well as you know, with those things like integration, um, with uh, I guess it depends whether you're on to say FreeBSD or Linux. The integration is not necessarily that great, but um, you know, in ZFS where you can set up a share volumes mm. and there's integration with Samba and yeah, ZFS, yeah. That's it's all pre-plumbed for you. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of work if they're going to aim towards that. But if so, when I went to see what they were doing with Stratus. They, it seems like they felt that this feature set is essentially where they were going to head towards as maybe a, you know, first viable product kind of thing. Because, um, I mean, if I were in their shoes and I saw everything we had to do, I'd be like, where do I start? 
And that's probably where, where they felt when they found out, oh, now we have VDO. Oh, and we just tried it on RAID. And we just tried it with Lux and DMCrypt. And they've still got a little bit of ways to go. But so, yeah, and it's, it's not, a, no, absolutely, it's in all honesty, they have some ways to go. But I, I think it's good that they at least have the effort in place. You had one? Yeah, I asked two things. Yeah. Does this relate much to Ceph? Ceph? Does this, um, does this cover some of the same cases as Ceph? Yeah, I can or talk to that. Um, and the, the, other, the other thing would be, how about the relationship with uh, Hammer? Hammer? Okay, Hammer, I'm not too familiar with. It's Dragonfly DSD. Yeah. Um, they've been doing the deduplicating, uh, deduplicating file systems for several years now. Mm. So um, I'm not familiar with Hammer, but for the Ceph piece, it is all inside Red Hat. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're experimenting. Um, in fact, um, there is there's a lot of testing that has been done against their Gluster stuff. Um, not as much with Ceph, but that's still got to happen because it's part of the product. And let's say you have you know, a data store where you're running RHEL machines off of, and it happens to be Ceph because you did that, and you happen to have used VDO. You don't want it to come to a screaming halt because of it, right? Um, there, there is one other thing. No, it shouldn't. However, however. Oh, it should be. It should be transparent. And it, it does pretty good to try to be. But there's some situations where well, even when I thought about it, when they said it's probably not a good idea, uh, I'm just going to do, those are, uh, that's a triple replica of, gr of Gluster, right? And if you do this, and then you put, you know, it's presented as one thing, and if you put VDO on there, and at block level it's trying to do dedupe and compression, what do you think might collide with what Gluster's trying to do? Cluster's trying to replicate at this level, right? Yeah, this causes problems. Because video is going to be like, like there, there's certain levels where it's going to, it has to see a disk, right? Or an LVM block or some sort of block device in order to work with, you know, data at block level. So they, would, they say that this is essentially not something you would want to do unless you've done your homework with like how much abstraction you have before <coughs> the, um, before video starts doing its work, or they would say completely disengage dedupe altogether and just take advantage of compression. Um, but um, there's other situations where they say, like, you shouldn't do things. So um, another one is, okay, yeah. Um, another one is, uh, let's say, for example, you've got video here on a blot on a disk. Right. Um, up here, and then you do LVM thin. You don't want to do video again. Obviously not. Right. This is like taking you know a NetApp and putting it on top of a NetApp, um, or taking ZFS and putting it inside a data set of itself. Right. Yeah. So like some of these like are, are pretty dumb scenarios, but um, people have, have evidently asked them because there are articles out there saying do not do this. <laughs> I, I, I found it hilarious when I found them, but I, evidently some people don't think about storage um, as, as well as you would hope. Um, There's no paradigm so pure that somebody won't immediately try and pervert it. <laughs> there you go. Well said. So the, the, there's, there's plenty of scenarios you can think up to, to use this tooling with. Um, and I mean, uh, as they even flesh out the Stratus tool set, I'm sure they'll have even more stringencies where they will suggest to do or not do a certain thing with the tooling, right? Um, I mean, we've all gotten used to it with the ones that we already use, certain things you do and don't do. Um, but see, I like this tooling because it's in its infancy, so there's a lot that can happen in terms of changing it from an open source perspective. Right now, um, unfortunately, they only put it out on GitHub so that people can build from source the packages into your distro. So you can do this with, um, 
I haven't tried it with anything but CentOS or RHEL 7.4, 7.5, and 7.6 myself. But because you can build it from source, if you're better at package building than I am, and you may very well be, um, you can probably build it for any distro. Um, you're talking specifically about Stratus as opposed to VDO? No, I'm talking about VDO. Talking about VDO. Stratus is a, as, an, as a full, like as the product that they've sort of got in alpha stages, I'm not going to try right now. I'm purely consuming video. So on my day-to-day -day laptop, I have, um, I run, I use KVM to do um, some Windows VMs whenever I need them. And I have that volume where all the VMs live on a uh, video disk. So what I did is I have, um, I'll just show you, I have, a, I have a, an LVM chunk out of my SSD, right? And so I put video on that, and I have an LVM thin, and then I have file system. So it seems pretty involved, but the reality is video can fake logical size, but I want LVM there in front of XFS because of management. I want the flexibility LVM gives me for sizing back and forth the volume as needed. Um, let's say I, I expand everything underlying. I do have to go up the stack and expand things, but um, I've built playbooks to handle it already, so I'm not too worried yet. Does video actually need to be expanded, or do they need to know that it's a uh, LVM like underneath it as expanded, or will it just find that? So if you're talking about if I expand this one? Yeah. So if I add, for example, yeah, if I add another disk, then I it's best that I tell video through, there's a flag you can give it to tell it the uh, physical volume size. And then you tell it also what you want the logical to be. Okay. There's a flag for both. Um, because so it's- it doesn't, it doesn't talk to the LVM underneath it directly no. saying this is the, uh, uh, asking it for the size of the, the volume. Right? No, okay. no. Um, it has no, it's not gonna pull LVM for like what size you are, how big should I be? Um, you have to tell it what you want it to be, because it's it's free form. It's that piece of clay you can make it into whatever shape you want, but if the table underneath is too small, it's going to fall over. Um, and then you you know the thin on top gives me the flexibility for sizing, which I don't have down here, and then XFS on top because you need file system. Yeah. Would you say that video and VDM would they complement each other then? And video and. LVM and L yeah, they definitely complement each other. Yeah, you you want LVM in the scenario for for the flexibility. Like if you're most people are accustomed with using using LVM to expand and add disk underneath without chain you know without affecting everything and then expanding it again, contracting if you, but expanding and expanding expanding as you need to, um, and then video it just gives you that block layer within it to give you that fancy dedupe and compression. Um, the performance gains you get from ZFS compression are similar to the ones you get with uh, VDO. Um, I know that that was another reason why ZFS is pretty cool. Um, any other questions? Yeah? Is uh, <clears throat> VDO sensitive to the, uh, to the, to the logical or to, to the kind of file system that's sitting on top of it or is it agnostic to whether it's an AXD4 or... or no, you can put any um, extended attributes file system on top of it. Yeah. So I went straight to XFS just because it says extended attributes in the name sort of. Um, and then you can put EXT4, um, make sure you flag for extended attributes and then um, like there's, you could also, um, you could also do for example a just a disk, right? Like a real physical disk. You could just do video on top of it like that, and then file system. No problem. So the what happens there is video will basically work. You, you, you don't even have to tell it what the physical disk size is underneath it. You could just let it do its thing. And let's say this was 20 gigs, right? Um, VDO will just work its darndest to give you compression and dedupe as far as you throw data inside XFS, right? But you will sometimes have to tell VDO, hey, your logical size can be bigger 
It, because what happens is there's kind of a chasing game that happens. And this is why I kind of wanted the tool set to be more integrated with, you know, the, like the DU and the DF is because underneath ZFS will say it has this much, for example, right? But XFS will be like, you used to be, or sorry, you built me as like 20 gigs. But let's say this is now 30, right? Or it's a 30 gig disk that I only told VDO was 20 at the time. If I want it to use the whole thing, I'll have to go in and tell VDO, hey, your logical size is actually 30, right? And then that extra 10 gets used, and then I expand XFS on top, right? But if, so you have to do a little bit of management in that case. So this is the argument for doing over-provisioning first. So you do whatever you have beneath it, you aim for as much as you have. You put LVM on top of it to aggregate it all together. And then you say, you know, VDO, your physical size is this, but your logical size is like that, right? Even though your physical is maybe that much. And then what you do is because the thin LVM lets you fake your size as well, then XFS is no, no, none the wiser about what your logical size is. You follow there? It's a ton of abstract shit that's really difficult to kind of stick in your head, but it's, um, it's, it's just interesting because now the argument is for over-provisioning and let um, VDO tell you when it can't do it anymore, right? Yeah. I'm curious about the, um, the, uh, the interaction with the letter FS because we seem to have Red Hat on one side Deprecating. De deprecating. Yeah, it. yeah. And on the other side, we have Susie, who have wholeheartedly embraced it. And, yeah. Uh, in fact, carrying on that right. way. Yeah, yeah. Is so, there, do, one of the thing, one of the possibilities where you have things like this, where various layers are lying to each other enthusiastically, mm -hmm. uh, that they can, uh, if you like, fall into each other's lies and, and run into problems. Is there yeah. any evidence of that? Well, um, I haven't seen it or even read about it yet uh, because it's pretty new, but you could imagine that if you take a layer and then put another layer that makes the same effort, you're kind of counterintuitive at that point because you're spending CPU cycles doing something that's already been done, right? So if ButterFS uh, was one of the feature sets compression, yeah. yeah? So if you're already doing it at the VDO block level and it's doing it pretty good, I don't know why I'd want to bother at, uh, with ButterFS as a file system on top, right? Um, I mean, maybe, you're, maybe you have a good argument for it, but you'd want to see what the outcome is with testing. It's probably going to say you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> like, probably. Um, and so, I mean, it's a whole lot also, I think, even just simpler. Like, ZFS's commands are pretty simple, too. I mean, I'm familiar with them by now. Um, but I can show you, I brought, um, how are we for time? Okay, I'm, I don't plan to take it, but um, um, I'm gonna get to one other thing, but I wanna definitely graze on this. So if anything here um, doesn't stick out to you as a decent use case for it, um, or you have another one you can think of. This is by suggestion of um, customers I encounter um, and also by suggestion of just colleagues. Um, I mean, some of them are pretty obvious, but then some of them could be pretty elaborate. So the, the one that I think really sticks out in like current day is probably cloud consumption. Because what's everyone doing now if they're going to start gobbling up cloud instances of whatever it is, RHEL, CentOS, and then if you can build it for another distro, sure, you can use VDO. But um, if you're now compressing and getting dedupe on an individual VM that's doing whatever you want it to do in the cloud, you're now consuming less storage. So you can use VDO to over-provision in a VM that's sized for smaller. So you can choose the smaller disk for cost effectiveness and then over-provision the disk. Now, if you need to add more later, I'm sure you've 
you know, understood your costs by then, but it's a pretty decent argument because of the simplicity of deploying it. It's two packages in which one of, the, one of them is a kernel module, one of them is a management layer, right? Two packages, and as long as the system's running it, you have the volumes. So to get that otherwise, um, I mean, if I'm deploying in cloud and I want to use ZFS, it's pretty much a no-no because you don't have direct access to the disk. It's all falsified disk in the cloud, right? So the, the timing of this tooling, I think, is definitely on purpose. Uh, there's, no, there's no question that they thought about this before that acquisition. If everyone's going to be putting RHEL into cloud to, for doing things like you know, their OpenShift clusters or every other Red Hat product that they want people to put in the cloud, it makes sense because if you can shrink or reduce people's footprint for them, pretty much pro bono at this point, it's a gain, right? Now, how much of a gain it is for you if you're a really big company? Probably not that much, but if it's a large scale deployment that you're shrinking down and getting dedupe on, it's still a gain. Um, everyone will have to do their own cost analyses. I'm not here for that, but um, the other ones, I, the, the ones I really, really like are backups and home labbing. So I'm going to test it out for a full migration of like six terabytes of data. And, and I'll maybe talk about it if I can join your mailing list at some point. Yeah. What's KEDAS? Kubernetes. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, the other place where it will obviously shine is in things like deduplicating, you know, OS images that everyone has tons of, and then um, container image libraries. So has everyone messed with containers yet? Yeah. Okay, so containers contain obviously a ton of really common software libraries. Um, every one of them at least runs a little bit of shell. So you're deduplicating at very small um, block levels, like small quantities, which is what PDO even prefers, small IO. So the gains are there um, to be reaped. Uh, so the other part that I had was, this is what it looks like um, pretty much to make it happen. In the in this method, so here I have a disk. You just give it a name, and that's the logical size. So the disk that that's probably sitting on that I gave it is probably 16 gigs, and I said make it 18, just for shiggles. And then BG create is um, you know and LV create you're already familiar PV create. That's your LVM layer. And then XFS is, gives you the file system, mount it to a directory. And then these are the commands you'd use for um, gathering stats, seeing whether you have compression and dedupe on, and uh, seeing what the stats are on the volume. Now, um, time constricted, I'm, I'm not gonna go into the demo, but you can see more or less from this, um, what I'm talking about with the tooling being conflicting. So I highlighted the ones that kind of really stick out. So this here is your output from the video stat command, and this is from your DF. So actual file system is reporting like this, and video is reporting like this. Just take a gander and questions, comments, concerns, discussion. Video thinks I have 3.6 gigs available. File system thinks I only have 1.2. I think that's a good thing, right? Um, I'm actually, I'm apparently saving 47%. That's based on compression and due to being on. And um, I'm only using 77% of the physical volume that video is using. And, uh, yeah, so you're so you probably at hundred percent. Yeah, you're, you're yeah, you're probably uh, I mean, asking. At that point, can you increase the video logical size? Yeah. Increase the file so size? there, there's different ways to attack it, and once you hit ninety percent, you probably want to be thinking about it. I did this for a test case, but you should probably go underneath and start build, um, expanding the stack underneath, um, and then finally the file system to accommodate for this. But the reality is, when you hit hundred um, percent. This is probably going to only be at 80. Now, there's one particular use case where I know this is really, really hot. Solid state disks hate being more than 80% full, 
full, just like batteries, right? So this is actually a really good thing to just keep on just for the hell of it. Because if you're ever going to consume up to 80% of the physical disk and it's an SSD, you could stay there. You could just stay there and just say, oh, I've hit my limit, but I know the reality is I'm only 80% of my solid state drive. You understand, you understand where I'm going with this? Like if your solid state drive is 80% there, but your, your, your like file system's telling you that you're full, like that's 100%. But in reality, you're only 80. You're saving your SSD. Because if you go to 100%, your SSD is going to be very angry at you and won't give you what you want, which is all the speed and stuff. So just even as like, what do you call it? Like just even as like a parachute before you get full, just leave it on. Like I, I, would, I would totally use it for that. Now, there's one uh, implementation I would say don't do, and that's don't use it for a root. Um, file system, they haven't figured out booting from it yet. Yeah. Anything else is good. Oh, also, we've tried it with a Docker volume. Doesn't seem to like it. Docker volumes are very picky. There's a lot of testing that has to go into that. Um, this shows you kind of the layout. Um, you can ignore everything here up, but from VD, VDB down, this is the disk that I gave it. You can see the LVM layers. And um, where you see uh, T data and T meta, that's because it's a thin volume, right? So on top of that is, in the end, the video volume, the test video one. So what do you think? I can see a use for it. I've got um, an image store, either Nexus or Artifactory. Right. It's full of redundancies. Yeah. You probably got a ton of artifacts that are all very, very, very similar. Why not deduplicate and compress? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Curious why I switched to from ZFS to XFS with video. Why don't you do uh, turn off compression and do in ZFS and keep what you're familiar with? You mean you mean why I did that here? Yeah, well, you're, I think you were saying... Oh, I did this for my laptop. Yeah. So my laptop runs CentOS. Um, like I said, I wasn't comfy with using ZFS on it. Oh, okay. And there's no multiple disks, so there's no reason for me to do it. For a file server at home, I'm totally good with keeping ZFS. But I'm still going to test this case with video. I mean, I don't want to lose my snapshotting and, you know, revision state and all that stuff, checksumming. Like, I like to survive solar flares. But, you know, yeah. What was that contraindication relating to Docker? Um, Docker is very picky because, like, they've been changing what they want their underlying volume to be, be it overlay or overlay 2. Um, they, they can do LVM as well. Um, but because of all of that mess is why there's a lot of testing that has to happen. You might store your volume. Like, you might store the images on, on video. That's very good. Yes, but, yes. But to actually mount into, to mount your, in effect, this is, a, this is sort of back to the root file system. Yeah, it's probably so the same reasons, is yeah. It effectively, the Docker, this would be don't do the Docker root file system? So, yeah, like if you run Docker on a system, yeah. it needs its own volume to man manage all of its, its active images and layers. That's the one that you don't want to give this to right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, so the a Kubernetes cluster needs nodes. Yeah. You're jumping ahead. Yeah, yeah. Who was next? Yeah. Yeah. My question was, um, can you add video to like an existing system? Let's say it was already all backed up and ready to go. Yeah. With data on it that you. Uh, and you just said, okay, I want to put video on the system. Uh, can you do that with existing data on it? Or would you have to make a new video, make a new server and migrate it? Treat it like um, a file system. So if you wanted to introduce a new file system to your computer, you have to treat it like a new file system. So you probably want to do you know, two things up, move the data over, take out the other one. Or 
have it, you know, network attached, move the data in once you've built it. Yeah. There's no way to kind of convert your, your stack of storage to VDO with LVM in a file system. Yeah, yeah. what about if like LVM wasn't there or anything? Or yeah, if it's, remember, all it needs is a block device. You can present it with a disk. You can present it with an LVM disk. So like a, an LVM uh, logical volume. You can put a video on that, but why you would want to waste it when you could have done it at a lower level. Um, that's why, like, th there's two ways you can go about it, straight from the disk, or you do LVM, which gives you all that flexibility of doing over-provisioning from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed why you have two LVMs in that stack. One of them's thin. So a thin LVM is how you do, um, it, it's not concerning itself very much. It's, it's, it's logical marking of storage. It's not concerning itself very much with what the actual storage is. It's like, if, like this is what's known sort of as um, pre-allocated. So it's fully allocated disk, right? Whereas LVM thin is not fully allocated. It's not, it's not allocating all of its bits all over the device to know exactly how much is there. It just uses whatever you ask of it. And when you use everything it can give you, it stops. Whereas this tells you exactly what you have all the time. It's pre-allocated versus thin. It's a lot like um, in VMware, there's a term, I think, thin provisioning, similar. So, and why would you put video above LVM yeah, versus the other way around? Versus this? Yeah. Okay, so in, they're just two different cases. Um, in this case, you can do what I was saying is like that whole over, over provisioning. So you would report, for example, that um, the video device underneath is giving uh, this LVM and XFS 20 gigs. Whereas my underlying device, like the disk that's giving me LVM or the multiple disks even, could, give, could be a total of, I don't know, 16 gigs, right? LVM thin lets you fake that. And then XFS says, oh, you're telling me I have 20 gigs. Sure, because video faked it as well. Yeah, um, at the disk level here, uh, it's right on top of a 30 gig disk. So I could tell video when I create it, your physical size is 30 gigs, but I want your logical to be 40. And it's going to work its hardest to prove that to XFS. Follow? Yeah, I just don't understand what the advantage are. Like, LVM okay. lets you slice and dice the disk yep. out the way you want. Yep. But video, I think, you, you skew the whole disk, it gets more room to do its optimization. So if I do this, and then I add another disk. Then what? Yeah, you can't do anything across them. I can't merge them together. I need to make a new video volume. And then how do I merge these? I can't. I need an LVM layer if I want to do that. But that's too far up already without having done this. So I'm forced to make another file system. And then what am I going to do? Take this and do LVM? No. God, I'm five, six layers up. I mean, the layers don't matter as much. It's more just there's a certain order of operations that'll benefit you more than another, right? What this gives you is that flexibility from the beginning. You say, okay, I have 10 disks under here, right? Or however many disks. And you tell LVM to take them all and then present one block device to VDO. That's, I think, the key I should have probably mentioned. If you present just that one device to VDO, it's like, sure, I can use all of this. This is great. And then LVM says, sure, I can tell XFS whatever you want me to tell it. And VDO agrees with it. Yeah? Where does the LVM uh, thin come from? Is that a VDO thing or is that something LVM. already have? Yeah, it's already an LVM. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You just LVM do a. This is, it's sort of a fabrication layer. Yeah. Do I have it in here? Um, I don't have it in here, um, but um, it's really just a. When you're doing a logical volume creation, you just do a dash dash thin. Do I? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So there it is, thin. Great. Goody. Um, 
yeah, that's that's a key point though. Like if you build another like regular LVM on top, then you won't be able to do you won't be able to fake it to XFS. Yeah, and other flexibilities are gone. So LVM has to tell the truth. LVM gauge yeah. is the part that we explicitly give permission to lie. Yeah. <laughs> it is lies, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a useful lie. Cloaks, shadows, and lies. So what is the roll out the dark hands way? There were others? I just wanted to, uh, the question that was asked over there about how would you convert, uh, I wanted to make a suggestion. Um, if you have two disks and you have RAID, uh, then I assume you can take a normal approach where you break your mirror, build up your new stack on, you know, on, on one of your new disks with essentially yeah. a, a real disk and a, and a missing disk, uh, build up your new stack, move everything over, then take your old disk and add it back to your mirror. Yep, yep. Everything underneath here could be RAID. Yeah. Um, you could probably do RAID and then present it to VDO too. Um, um, I also want to mention, I really asked a question what you thought. Um, you had a bunch of use cases, uh, and it just kind of occurred to me because you were making the comments about uh, deduplication and ZFS not being good for deduplication. Um, have you thought about the idea of using VDO over ZFS volumes? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm going to write that down when I finish. It's a good one. Um, because, yeah, with both tools running upon each other, you could choose the better of whichever one you want. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, because if you're going to put LVM on top of ZFS anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a good point. Yeah. Um, hey, that's why we have these meetups. Ideas. Is it LVM on top of ZFS, or is it? Well, ZFS volumes is a good use case for this. As opposed to ZFS datasets. Yeah. Because ZFS datasets are endless, right? Like, they don't actually report a, a, a size, truthfully. So you need, you need a specific size to tell VDO, hey, I am this big, but you can lie about it being this big. VDO is... In this case with um, uh, virtual images, yep. right? virtual machine images, you could create a ZFS volume yeah. where you're going to dump a bunch of virtual machine images, put your VDO on it, put a file system on top yep. of that, dump all your images in there. Yep. And, and in that situation, those images. yeah, in that situation, I'd probably turn on DDUP on the video level, and I'd probably use compression on the ZFS level because I have the choice of you know GZIP nine, because that's fun. <laughs> um, you had you had one. I was just curious as to what is video presenting in your LVM video LVM thing. What is it presenting? Well, it's acting like a block device. Oh. Okay. Um, it's acting as though, like just imagine it wasn't there and LVM was just presenting a value to thin. Okay. It's just that it will have a limit that it's faking to thin. Yes? If you do compression on a layer above it, are you likely to prevent the deduplication from working? Yeah, so I guess that's another argument that might work actually that you have to kind of figure out wh what's happening because for what you were mentioning about volumes with um, video on top of ZFS volumes, then yeah, you have a good point that if one tool is, is, is cognizant of doing all of its dedupe and compression, but you take it away and have another tool do it at another layer, you're, you're kind of sacrificing that it's all encompassing in one, and then you're probably going to have conflicts even more so with consumption versus availability. Because um, then, I mean, if you want to use you know, regular non-specific tools to figure out how much is left, you're right, it's going to be even more of a headache. Um, I mean, it's still all, like there's probably a ton of testing to still do to see what works best in this stack. Um, but it's, it's exciting is that it's new enough that a lot of testing can happen and see if this gets merged with another tool set somewhere down the line. Yeah. Is it near or far from kernel integration? Uh, oh, yeah. So they're, um, they are working on getting this um, dropped into the kernel. Because, yes, right now you do, uh, you do use essentially an RPM to integrate it as a kernel module. Um, but they are working to get it pushed into the upstream kernel and such and so forth. Yeah. We'll see what Linus says. <sighs> I'm sure you wouldn't say no to a free compression and dedupe layer. Who wouldn't? 
Yeah. No one's open sourced one until now that's that's compatible with the GPL, and now that this one is, I'm sure he'd say yes. Yeah. Any others? Yeah. Any experience in deciding what block size makes sense to this? So by default, it goes with 4K, and it likes that size very much. Um, I haven't gone as far as setting the flag to change it, and I'm not going to bother right now. What's more important apparently is something called slab size. And um, I have to still do some more reading up on it, but that's um, another key tunable for video slab size. This 4K is, I think, the typical visible block size right. devices now. Mm -hmm. So of course, SSDs have much bigger yeah. fundamentally allocation units yeah. hidden away from you. Yeah. But I just wonder if it's kind of observable in performance. Mm. It, I, I would bet it is because yes, you can have much larger blocks that benefit an SSD. Um, but there is, um, there's verbiage in the documentation saying that they, they've decided on 4K um, mainly because if like the smaller, um, smaller block size and smaller uh, files moving around being the preference is because um, they feel based on stats that they encounter more files that are less than 8K or cases where the blocks are less than 8K in size and it shuffles them better with the algorithm they've chosen. Um, there's probably a whole bunch more data on that that I don't know of yet. Has there been playing with this on, in the uh, database world? Uh, no, but um, I brought this up this talk um, in a room where there were some DBAs and they simply didn't didn't understand how I could dedupe and compress before the file system and still have the database survive like they were they were like they simply couldn't understand how I could falsify the underlying storage to the file system and they were convinced almost to argumentative like aggressively arguing with me during the presentation about how you can't, you, you can't put a database on this. What are you, crazy? Like, it, it was pretty violent. Yeah. Well, I guess they've never used an SSD. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I imagine it. I, I could imagine it driving a crazy in a number of ways. So it's like, you see it driving and you get crazy. Sure. But I think that it sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because if... It's only for driving crazy. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Everybody has a DBA that they both love and hate. Yeah. Uh, I think we're done. Yeah.